Hi guys, welcome back to my podcast. <laughs> I don't know if I can call this podcast, but yeah. Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Sit and Talk. Today episode, we're gonna talk about my childhood, everything that happened with me since. I was born until I was in high school because right now I dropped out from uni and I don't think I would go back. I would ever go back to university again because, first of all, I don't see the point of going back, and I think I've come too far to go back. So that's not what I want. I grew up in the middle of nowhere. Um, I was born in Bangkok actually. But I think I live in Bangkok for like two years with my dad because my mom passed away when I'm about around two years old. But that doesn't make me feel like I have a problem with I don't have a mom. My dad, I think he is so strong to be like a single dad. He also worked and raised me at the same time. But then it got to some point that he have to. Bring me to Northern Thailand because we have a big family that live there. Most of my family they're not in Bangkok, you know. So we kind of like move to the Northern Thailand to visit them. And I didn't have this conversation with my dad like properly, but I just assume thing. I think he at some point have to bring me to the family to have them raise me instead of him because. He also have to move where he wants to work too. He works as a barber for guys and girls, and he's like a very talented. He used to be a singer in Bangkok. I don't think it's like officially singer. I mean, there's kind of singer that you can see in the pop or the bar, mostly like bar. I honestly have no idea what's was going on at that time, but yeah, he was. Very popular, and I think he looks so good. My family member, when I go back to the photo of them, like album photo that they keep it until now, it's just like everyone just looks so stunning and could be like a Hollywood movie actor or something like that. I got a lot of impression on how my family looks so good and. I just love how they look. I moved to Northern Thailand, be with my uncle and aunt. They are basically my parents, even though they're not like biological parents to me. But I still think that they're my parents because they raised me since I was two years old. So grateful for that because they don't make me feel like. I am a kid that doesn't have a mother. To be honest, I don't have a feeling that I miss my biological mom because she's gone. When I was too little to remember, like to have memory about her in my head, I can't think of anything about her in my head. But it doesn't mean that I don't miss her at all because I would like to know her too. If I have a chance, like when I infer to dad and mom, so just know that they are not my real biological parents. So my dad, he is an alcoholic person. It was so hard for us to deal with all the problem that can't be solved. When I was living with them, it basically like a chaotic, chaotic. I think they both love each other, but they live together. So miserably, as long as I can remember, because they have fight every day, they have a lot of conflicts between them. Most likely, happen because my dad would go out and have a drink and be so drunk and come home, and my mom would be like trying to talk with him. Which you know, obviously, when you're trying to talk with drunk people, they're not listening. They just. In their own world, and it get worse by trying to creating fight, which I have to live at the same house for like years. So I kind of grew up in that environment. So it's hard to be like escape from hearing their fight, 
and you have to live with that. So most of the time, I shut myself in my own bedroom and put on the music so loud in my headphone and just kind of escape the voice. Other than that, they kind of treat me well. They They don't really have anything to be talking bad about. A lot of things that they have done that they don't know what is best for me, right? When I was in, do you call that high school? Okay, let's start with kindergarten. So I was sent to the local school, which is really close to my village, but it's basically a local school in another village. So we basically have to come down the mountain by a van a school van to go to the school every morning i have to wake up so early i have a lot of problem with my hair i was like getting ready in my own room and every single time i have to do my ponytail like that back to that time i still not have my bangs yet so I was very insecure about my forehead and all my face just looked too big for me personally. So I kind of judged myself, but I was really popular <laughs> in my school, you know, um, because I have a light skin. If you know that, that is definitely a thing in Thailand that they very like light skin girls and guys. That's what we preferred. So yeah, every morning I'll be late. So there will be like a van honking whoop, whoop, in front of my house, calling me to get the fuck up and go to school. I mean, I did already get the fuck up, and I was just like, oh my god, why are they so rushing, and why everyone just like living so. R- fast and not relaxing actually i think that is not their problem it's my problem that i have to get up earlier or maybe getting ready quicker to be on time so being on time was my biggest problem when i was a child because i don't know how to manage the time properly and also Every morning, my mom she's kind of annoying because it's like I set the alarm at this time that I want to wake up, but she will always go in my room and wake me up before the time that I have to wake up, and that pissed me off. So I went to bed and wait for the time that I want to wake up, but then it always ended up with me being late and not wake up. And the way she try to wake me up is just like, oh my god, she come to my room, open the door, put on the light, which is so so is so bright. I want to scream at her face, and told her get out. Every time I try to get ready, yeah, back to my hair. I don't know how to make the perfect ponytail. I ended up spend like. 10 times attempting to do my ponytail over and over again. I can't go to school looking ugly, you know. But then, the situation forces me because the van is waiting for me f- so long, so I have no choice. Oh, and also another problem. This is the biggest one that make me feel not confident at all. Even though I have a cute face, is that. When I was a child, like 10, 11 years old, I break out so bad. I don't know what to do with my face. I have pimple all over my face. It started with my forehead first, and then my bow cheek. I have no motivation to do things. I mean, I still do, and I still learn in school pretty much effective way. But then. Every time I look in a mirror, I was like, "God damn, this bitch! You better not look like this. This is not me." Every single night, I went to bed praying that my face would get a little bit better day by day. I think 
The real reason why I break out so bad is because my hormone is changing and I just don't know what to do with it. So I kind of find a lot of ways to cure my pimple. I'll go in the kitchen and grab a tomato and lime to put on my face. Oh my god, there's one time my aunt trying to help me with putting a fuck baking soda on my pimple face and it was so hurtful so painful my skin gonna ripped off at that moment and i was like toileted even though i am very popular in my school i am yet the most insecure creature in my school honestly i record this video without the description I just say what I want to say, which is a little bit embarrassing. I shouldn't tell you guys this, but yeah, this is the reality of my video. So bear with me, forgive me. <laughs> and also, I want to have a proper microphone or a headphone. I got a new headphone, which is a bit pricey. If you know the Sony one that is really popular, I love that. I absolutely love them i can't use that to record my video because um they don't have the microphone so i just use my phone i think it's a better quality of the voice right now i'm just sitting in kind of like bedroom in my little outfit i just got this outfit um it's a top that i was looking for because it's comfy and I think it looks good on me. Oh, updated guys. So I'm not in Georgia anymore. I left Tbilisi almost a week ago. I'm here in Malaysia. Tomorrow will be Valentine's Day. Malaysia is very similar to Thailand because they just nearby each other. I just know that. I just know that forgive me but i just know this is how malaysia is like so it's a muslim country also there's a lot of chinese people and indian people living here too that is how clueless i am about malaysia i have no idea that they use latin letter with their language and i also don't know if they have a lot of Thai restaurant in their country because what the fuck everywhere that I go I was trying to have Malaysia food yesterday night for dinner but then we went to the street market tell me why we ended up at Thai restaurant and yeah we have the climb we have the spicy herbs um chicken we have uh, mango sticky rice. That is the food I miss the most. And they were amazing. They were nice. I love them. And one thing that I hate is because they served us um, a rotten clam. Back about my childhood. I think I will do another episode talking about my love popular relationship in my childhood. Because... I was having a lot of boys going on my life at that time. And it was crazy. It was crazy. I think that will be interesting episode to talk about. So I'm not just going to conclude that part in my childhood. Um, What else to talk about my childhood though? I was just living like a normal urban girl. But something that different about me is that my belief in my skin color, <laughs> I don't know, also my face too. A lot of people said that I look like a Chinese. It started with my ex. He told me that I look like a Chinese. He was asking me if your mom or your dad have kind of like half Chinese or something like that. My whole life, I've never wondered that. So I went and asked my dad about my real dad. About um, if my mom have uh, some kind of half Chinese genes or something like that. Because this is kind of suspicious and I am starting to be curious. 
he said basically no she's 100 thai okay because if i am half chinese and i'm not i have no clue about that i would be so embarrassing about myself that i could not speak chinese right now <laughs> and i will feel the pressure to learn chinese because if i appear to be half chinese so maybe it's a good thing that i'm 100 thai okay i think i ran out of things to talk about my childhood honestly um actually i have a lot of things but i just didn't write down my thoughts properly so sorry for that so another thing that i want to say is that i have my aunt that helping me when i was like i don't want to be at the same house as my parents when they were fighting so i kind of pack my stuff and go to sleep at my aunt's house they have a business selling products um selling food in the village i think they're only shop that appears to be in our village so most of the people in our village gonna go to the shop and buy stuff from there so every morning i have to wake up at 5 a.m and get out of the bed go to help them carry the food that they got on the truck the hardest thing for me is that to wake up early because i tend to stay very late at night because i was just like okay i have a freedom now i can do it whatever i want in my room and no one is gonna bother me hmm. so i stay up very late on my phone obviously yeah i wake up so early every morning and then sometimes most of the time i will be selling food products it's like a small grocery shop that i have to be a cashier and service the customer which is a very boring job for me and they don't really pay like a monthly they just pay day per day not a lot because i wasn't work full time for them because we also the same family so it's kind of complicated with that kind of thing the business thing i just feel like i trapped in that village and i always want to get out of the village and go somewhere else so i did that the story get more interesting um, my dad was so strict every time i have a problem and i come up to him i just want to talk right i just want to share how my day went i will give you an example so a school van this school van have a lot of students inside because obviously the guy that drives school van he wants a lot of money from the kids so <coughs> he pick up the kids as much as possible barely fit in the van we kind of like sit like this <laughs> uncomfortable no one can move and it was so bad and i wore the white sneaker because that day it was wednesday that's the rule for my school that we have to wear that kind of shoes and every time someone comes up in the van they will step on my shoes and that is so frustrating because i have to wash it by myself every every time and it's hard to scrub it off like dirt and i was pissed off but i didn't say anything because i was a shy a shy kid a very quiet one i wouldn't open my mouth saying any single word to anyone in the van except the one that i really know the one that come from the same village as me we barely talk everyone's just being quiet no one knows me so i told that to him to my dad and he was like okay but he didn't tell me what he was gonna do after hearing my problem he was out of his way to uh i think he called a guy that ride the the van and he basically complained to him i don't know the detail the situation that time but the fucking van guy he was like called me and this guy is not young by the way he's the same age or maybe older than my dad he called me and be like why are you just telling your dad why are you being like that 
You're so dramatic. A lot of problems. What's what's going on? Something like that. I don't remember. I remember it vividly that he basically just called me to dump his anger on me or just to trying to address something that is not true. But yeah, I feel bad because I didn't expect my dad to do that. And that's embarrassing because you talk shit with your dad and then your dad oh my god it's just a whole frustration situation thing so that's why i kind of like when i have problem i avoid to tell him because he'll make it a much bigger problem i become a quiet more quiet kid since then i will not talk i will not trust anyone except myself i will keep everything to myself and that was so bad it's really bad i kind of feel like all in the world is just me that i can trust it took me a while to convince him that i really need to move out of the village and be somewhere else near my school because it take like hours to get to my school and i have to wake up at least 4 a.m. in the morning to get ready, eat breakfast, and be ready to join the school. One day, I got lucky, I guess. I was in high school. It's my first year of high school. I convinced him that I really struggle with every day that I have to wake up so early. Can I move out, please? Another problem with the thing that I can cannot move out of the village is also the money. Because if I move out, I have to find a rent that is cheap, but also means that we still have to pay money anyway. So I have a cousin that she lives in a small apartment. So I joined her and my my dad kind of pay for like electric bills or something like that to help her out because I was going to stay with her. That is my first move trying to get out of the village there's no way going back to that village again because i hate that place yeah i moved to stay with my cousin and then i stay there for months or maybe a year not for a long time and i found a place for me to stay by myself that is when my journey begin actually i skip a little bit about me staying with my cousin at that time i was having a boyfriend in high school he is a chinese but he cannot speak fluently chinese so yeah but he's not thai and we are in the same high school he come in flirting with me first and then we ended up being a couple secretly like my friend <laughs> They don't know what's going on until we like walk together, spend time together. They kind of can can see what's going on and they were like upset. Why don't you tell me what's going on with you guys? Why do I have to find out by myself? Everyone basically says stuff like that. So I am a very private person when it comes to my relationship, you know, because I don't feel comfortable to share it. But... At the same time, when I have a fight and I can't handle it, I'll be like drama drama to my friends. That is kind of bad. So I appreciate everything that happened in my life and I learned from that a lot. Am I still recording the audio? Yeah, I'm still recording. <clears throat> and I'm just grateful for everything, either bad and good. I'm just trying to appreciate the bad experience more because I just hate it. Why does this specifically event have to happen to me? That is my thought. But now I kind of like, whatever. Everything happened for a reason and eventually they're going to benefit you. And what's the point of hating it? Just live with it. Duh. So, yeah, and then... After I lived with my cousin for a while, I moved to my own apartment. <gasps> did I? No, I did not. I still have one friend 
like one roommate to share a room with me and it's basically just like I wasn't there that is just not my room I just rent it because <laughs> I was not staying there most of the time because the apartment that I get with my roommate is so close to my ex-boyfriend apartment and I kind of like go to his apartment most of the time, spend time with him, sleep over. And he also have a roommate too. He basically have the first roommate and the second roommate. The second roommate is the worst. The first roommate, he was there for a while and then he moved out because I think he's kind of rich. But he, he can choose where he can be so... I didn't get to know him that well, but I see him around and I think he's a good good guy, I guess. And the second one is absolutely bad guy and just the way that he act is totally different from my ex-boyfriend. So I, I have no idea how they ended up sharing the, the same room. He was a good friend. He also got his girlfriend too, but it was a really toxic relationship all the time. I mean more toxic than our relationship our relationship was so toxic too there's one time i lived with my roommate and we went to bed it's a uh, very late in the morning and i have a fight with my ex-boyfriend through the text messenger and i was like i don't want to be here i need to see him and we need to talk in person so i sneaked out i sneaked out yeah in the middle of the night from the window so we have just one bed that I share with my roommate we sleep on the same bed but I did everything so quietly that she didn't even feel it she didn't even know it and in the morning she was like texting me where are you I was so worried about you and how did you get out without unlock the door and I was like babe I'm with my boyfriend I sneaked out and I sneaked out through the fucking window and she was like what the hell i think she is so done with me because every time she said that she want to spend time with me more she just feel lonely because i was i wasn't there and i kind of get her but i was in the state of being in love and i don't know how to manage time properly between friends and boyfriend you know I was so obsessed with bo my boyfriend at that time. I just wanted to spend 24 hours with him, which is so bad. And I learned from it. I learned from it very hard way. Okay, thanks for that lesson. <laughs> and yeah, I kind of moved out from my roommate for... After a while, I leave with her. Because I wasn't there with her, it's kind of I kind of feel bad. I feel very bad for her that I did that, but at the same time, it's just like we're we don't know what are we doing at that time. So I hope she forgives me because I forgive myself <laughs> about my relationship. It's just like we ended after we went to the different university. There's no point of being like a far long distance relationship because we're both so young and we can't afford to go and see each other and we still have to meet a lot of people that is how it ends it ends badly though he basically ghosted me and not until i reach out to him the last time i reached out to him to say that we broken up because like it's been more than a week that we were separated and he didn't send me any text. Very confusing teenager relationship whatsoever. I've been through a lot when I sit and think about it. So I think that is pretty much I want to share with you guys in this video. So <coughs> I am going to go and do my stuff now i still have um, things to do so i hope you have a good day and i hope you like this video you can comment about my story in 
anything if you feel like it. So I love you so much. I miss you. I miss we having conversation. Even though this whole time you're not saying a word, but anyways, I'm trying to be a talkative person here. So thank you for watching, listening, and we and spending time with me. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Don't expect too much. How soon it's gonna be? So, yeah, I love you. Bye.